she's surrounded by all of these creatures that she doesn't know how to care for. Um, but then also what happens when these creatures realize that they are not receiving the nurturing that they are desiring. So it's the possibility of chaos. Does anybody have any questions so far? Are they a particular creature? No, they're um, actually a, a taxidermy foam mold that I got of a squirrel, but the foam molds don't have any musculature or ears or tail or anything like that. So um, I just press molded a bunch of So the concept these. of lemming or following No, they're the supposed to have a rodent feel, but they're not referencing any okay. particular rodent. It's kind of more of that feeling that she may have when she realizes that she has all of these things to care for, you know, that tickling kind of feeling. So how, how important is it for your viewer to understand your intention? It's not actually that, it's important for me to start off with a reference point and a question. And uh, I completely and totally welcome the viewer to entering the pieces, and I expect them to enter the pieces with whatever they're coming into it with. Um, this piece, actually, the idea for this one came when I was reading The Life of Pi, and there's this fantastic scene where uh, the boy and the tiger have come onto this island, and there are all of these little creatures that um, have never experienced the possibility of fear or danger. And the tiger is going through, and they're running up to him to love him and jump on him and cuddle him and he's just ripping through him, eating him. And this image of all of these creatures coming and running to him. And then on top of that I was looking at a lot of imagery of Hitler with crowds and Stalin and you know like all of these old political images. And so that's kind of like where all of these things start to trickle in together. Any other questions so far? Did you already say why that was pinkish right there? Didn't know? Uh, that's really just like the, the flushing, like what she's passing on. Uh, so only the ones that are suckling or close to suckling on her fingers have a bit of the pink. You, you said you had a, a press bowl, but you have so many different postures. Right. Well, I, I only uh, did a press mold of the body and the head, and then I handed all of the feet. That's one of the reasons I did a press mold was because uh, it would be much harder to manipulate the features with a slip cast all over. This is, this is uh, a potter's clay or stoneware. It's a stoneware. Yeah. Yeah. It's a stoneware that is like a basic white stoneware recipe that I then get a lot of sand and a lot of grog and a lot of nylon fibers and dump it all in there and mix it up. And this girl weighs 400 pounds. No, but she probably weighs close to 200. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all hollow. They are all they hollow are. forms. I coil build all of these forms from the toe up. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do an, I'll have body parts lying around, and when it's time to attach an arm here and there, they'll all come together. <laughs> so we can move over here to this piece. saturated sorrow and it's really about loss. Um, she is in a position where it looks as though she could have been cradling something. Again, it's that pattern, the actual, uh, like the missing gun in this piece. She's missing something that she was holding and she's just melting uh, into the ground. She's, I usually show this piece on the ground. I usually show all of these pieces on the ground, but with the brown floor, the tents, we needed a little bit of a lift. So she would typically look as though she's melting into the floor. It's a pretty self-explanatory piece there, I think. <laughs> um, and this is a lot of different materials also. It's clay, plaster, epoxy, uh, paints, um, spackle. A lot of different stuff thrown in there. 